Without so much as a warning, life hangs in the balance. Human endeavor turns to chaos. And within seconds, nothing will ever be the same. Ever. I'm Ron Pitts. From failures of engineering to nature's wrath, man and destruction constantly collide. A Spanish air show audience is stunned as a German-built helicopter crashes and disintegrates right before their eyes. And a section of burning warehouse collapses on a firefighter, burying him under a wall of flaming debris. Safety and sanity take a holiday when things get destroyed in seconds. July 2007, flames light up the night 75 miles outside Buenos Aires, Argentina. A gas station is fully engulfed in flames, putting firefighters and residents on high alert. The station contains dozens of tanks filled with highly flammable liquid propane. When the fire hits 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the tanks give way. the normally gaseous propane in a pressurized liquid form. But once heated, the propane expands to more than 200 times its liquid volume. Despite being outfitted with release valves, the steel tanks can't contain the expanding compound. Trimmers from the blast are felt more than a mile away. Debris is blown throughout the neighborhood. Firefighters work their way inside the warehouse where a truck is in flames under the collapsed roof. Eventually, the fire subsides. Firefighters and Good Samaritans quickly remove the remaining propane tanks before they become more fuel for the fire. Four hours after firefighters arrive, the site is reduced to ruins. The initial fire that led to the explosions is blamed on an electrical short. Despite the massive inferno, only one person is injured. Florence, Montana. A highway patrolman is in pursuit of a man suspected of murder. He's also wanted for the shooting of seven others, including a deputy. Speeds reach over 100 miles per hour as the chase nears the Idaho state line. Unable to lose his pursuer, the suspect tries a new tactic. The impact rams the suspect's car up onto the officer's hood and nearly through his windshield. Spinning 180 degrees, the suspect exits his car. He takes up position behind the trunk and opens fire. The gun battle rages as another officer races to the scene. The first officer dies for cover to reload, as the second officer returns fire with a 12-gauge shotgun. Smoke spewing from the lead officer's bullet-riddled car gives the wanted murderer the cover to escape. He flees at high speed towards the Idaho border, with the two lawmen taking chase in the undamaged cruiser. Near the Idaho state line, Montana troopers lay down spike strips in hopes of disabling the suspect's car. 
speeding around a bend with the officers in pursuit, he drives over the spike strip and blows out his tires. Skidding to a stop, the suspect fires at the oncoming patrol car. In a last ditch attempt to quell the battle, the officer uses his cruiser as a weapon. The impact causes the gunman's pistol to go flying. Troopers move in and take down the disarmed suspect, now trapped in his car. One of the officers lies on the ground with a broken leg suffered in the crash. He returns to duty several weeks later. The suspect is charged with murder and nine additional felonies. sentenced to 11 consecutive life terms. The man who calls himself the world's greatest motorcycle daredevil is about to add to his legacy. Robbie Knievel has come to New Jersey's Atco Raceway to attempt a 180-foot jump. He needs to travel 75 miles an hour in order to clear the gap. It's a feat Robbie manages to pull off here at ADCO once, but not twice. Robbie's going 10 miles an hour too fast, causing him to overshoot the landing ramp. He somersaults then takes a hard hit on the asphalt. Robbie separates his collarbone, breaks his ankle, and suffers numerous bruises. But the veteran of more than 250 jumps is undaunted. A year later, Robbie tries the stunt again and pulls it off perfectly. Immelord, the Netherlands. It's the opening round of the 1998 Dutch National Rally Championship. Two-person teams race through the countryside northeast of Amsterdam on a course of tight turns and muddy roads. which proves to be a dangerous combination for the father and daughter team in car number one. Jan van der Merrill and his daughter spin out at 130 miles per hour. The car nosedives into a water-filled trench, somersaults, then plunges back into the ditch. Fortunately, Jan and his daughter suffer no injuries. As for their modified rally car, it's a total loss. San Francisco, California. A three-alarm warehouse fire rages out of control in the southeast part of the city. Local residents capture the event on tape. Do not wanna go out. Firefighters battle the blaze from all angles. Some from positions high above the warehouse. Others take on the flames up close. Perhaps even too close. A 
vertical extension of the roof wall called the parapet buckles under the intense heat and collapses. A firefighter close to the building is caught unaware and is knocked down by the flaming debris. Firefighters and paramedics race to the trapped man's aid. After digging the fireman out, they quickly stabilize him, put him on a gurney, and rush him to the hospital. By daybreak, the fire that ends up causing $600,000 worth of damage is finally under control. The injured firefighter survives with only a broken leg and second degree burns on his arms. Thanks to the quick action of the emergency crew. Reno, Nevada, 1984. Top fuel drag boats race across Lake Lahontan. Here comes the first they cross the finish line, but one driver doesn't slow down. In fact, he speeds up and heads directly for shore. If the boat doesn't stop, an impact is imminent. In the middle of the race, the driver realizes he has a stuck throttle. There's no way for him to stop the boat. The drag boat slams into the beach at 160 miles an hour, then into a sand dune. The boat disintegrates on impact. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not go down toward the beach. An instant before he hits land, the driver bails out and slams into the water. Rescuers rush to the scene. They pull the driver from the lake and rush him to shore. He sustains major injuries to his leg. As for the boat, the pieces are gathered up and hauled off to a salvage yard. If the driver hadn't jumped out when he did, it's doubtful he would have survived this crash. Thousands of spectators gather on Samil Beach in Vigo, Spain to watch the sixth annual Vigo Air Show. Among the performing aircraft is a German-designed MBB V0105 helicopter. The pilots operating the four-bladed multi-purpose chopper show off its maneuverability to the sun-bathing crowd below. But during one of the maneuvers, the pilot makes a catastrophic error. The pilot and co-pilot purposely angle the nose down at 90 degrees to wow the crowd. As they attempt to level off, the 2,800-pound aircraft flies too low. The pilot's last-ditch effort to pull up fails when the landing skids dip under the water. The impact breaks the helicopter into hundreds of pieces. The crowd jumps to their feet. Rescue efforts instantly ensue. But the helicopter sinks in seconds. The two pilots are pulled from the water into a raft and taken to shore. The crowd applauds as one of the pilots reunites with his wife. Aside from a deep cut to one of the pilot's legs, neither man sustains serious injuries. Pilot error is to blame for the crash. The roughly $1.1 million aircraft is declared a total loss. Red Deer, Canada. Locals call it Freedom Road. 
This long stretch of highway has become a hot spot for bikers to ignore speed limits. And throw caution to the wind. But hot dogging at high speeds on an open road is a risky endeavor where the slightest miscalculation can trigger severe consequences. miles per hour, the black motorcycle rips past the cameraman. Close behind, the red bike tops out at 103 miles per hour. At such high speeds, the rider doesn't notice the black motorcycle has slowed down. The red bike does an endo and sends its rider tumbling. The motorcycle nearly hits the downed rider. The rider of the rear-ended black motorcycle is almost knocked off his bike. He regains his balance and maintains control. Oh my god. Despite the severity of the crash, the rider of the red motorcycle suffers only a broken collarbone. I've never seen a bike fly apart like that before, man. Look at that rim. Both riders report their motorcycles as total. The combined cost of the bikes is over $10,000. Dating back to the 1800s, tin mining is one of the oldest businesses in Malaysia. At one time, the region produced one third of the world's tin supply. But with mines exhausted and a steep drop in the price of tin, production has dropped 90%. Mining companies now dig for the scarce metal wherever they can and at whatever the risk. In the state of Parak, workers have dug too close to the seawall of an abandoned pit mine bordering the Indian Ocean. See, right now. As water pressure grows more intense on the coastal side of the quarry, the ground trembles rocks slide, and the ocean begins to pour into the pit. Massive sections of land disintegrate in a river of mud and rock. Less than a minute later, another chunk of seawall gives way, leaving very little to hold back the water. What remains of the tin mine slowly crumbles, but there's more destruction to come. The Indian Ocean can't be contained. The last remaining section of the mine collapses and the ocean roars through the gap. Within minutes, the quarry is gone. An aerial photograph shows a new cove nearly a half mile wide has formed in the aftermath. Several hours before the collapse, the owner of the mining company discovers the leak. He orders the equipment moved and evacuates his workers. It's a decision that ends up saving dozens of lives. I'm Ron Pitts, and thank you for watching Destroyed in Seconds.